I'm here in Zimbabwe, keeping a close eye on the Zimbabwe-India series, which has generated more interest now because of India's loss, unexpected loss in the first T20. Here are some takeaways from the first two games so far. Well, the first stick is Abhishek Sharma. In spite of getting out for a duck, trying to play a big shot in the first game, it didn't stop him from changing things in this one. Uh, he went with the same approach. He got off to a bit of a flyer, slowed down, but he was still playing a high percentage of aggressive shots. His pickup, his acceleration through the middle overs, just what you want from what someone who could be replacing the likes of Rohit Sharma or Virat Kohli at the top of the order. He was about 28 of 23. He had a chance where he was dropped and then he picked up 72 of his next 23, 24 balls. So that was tremendous acceleration. The approaching a milestone, slowing down syndrome is not something Abhishek Sharma has augurs well for India. And the fact that he's actually bowled in both games is another bonus. Takeaway number two is Ravi Bishnoi, who's had two excellent games. Career best figures in the first, and he just kept that going in the second. Went for just 11 of his four. In fact, he's gone for 24 of eight overs in the two games so far and picked up six wickets. Bishnoi is someone that the selectors will keep a close eye on with Yuzvindra Chahal not named in this squad and the fact that they're going to look at perhaps the second wrist spinner come the next cycle of T20 cricket with the World Cup in India and Sri Lanka in two years' time. Bishnoi's continued run of form just uh, holds him in really good stead. He's virtually unplayable, even though the ball's not turning. It's skidding in his own words, and that's making him uh, a real threat. And Washington Sundar, who's a really interesting story for this series, especially with the parts that he's had. He barely got any IPL game time. He's in and out of squads, at best a reserve. But with Ravindra Jadeja's retirement, there is a spot for that spin bowling all-rounder. And India are waiting for an off-spin bowler and an all-rounder to come good. I thought the first T20 was a small opportunity loss with the bat. I know it was tough and he was batting with the tail. It was an all-round batting collapse. But if you'd have taken India over the line, it could have just propelled his confidence and his, uh, his graph when it comes to this Indian team. He still started well with the ball. I'd like to see him bowl tougher overs, which could happen given India went to seam bowler light in the second game to put more responsibility on someone like Washington Sundar. So I'd really like to see how this series goes for him. He started well with the ball and okay-ish with the bat. Zimbabwe remain a threat in these conditions. India decided to bat first in the second T20I after their batting performance in a chase didn't go up to scratch in the first. But Zimbabwe through their seamers with Blessing Muzarabani and Tendai Chatara, if they get a Richard and Garava fit, then their seamers have caused problems in both games with the new ball so far. The batting is where they possibly need to improve on the most. They just cannot find a way to play India's spinners, especially Ravi Pishnoi. But they're not as easy a pushover as perhaps we would have imagined going into this series. And that first T20 was a pretty good wake-up call for this young Indian side. Still going to be a fun series, though.